Yes, it's that time of the year again. 2021 is coming to an end and we must talk about this. I honestly think I had a few mental breakdowns in 2021. My hair went from silver white, whatever you want to call it, to fully bald to now this. And I had that bald cut in my live stream. Oh, uh, I'm not supposed to talk about that? Oh. Right, we're talking about product of the year. Nobody, nobody cares about my hair. So, product of the year. There is not a single product I would choose over this speaker for the product of the year. And that is the KLH Model 5 speakers. And I think a lot of people have predicted it. And I know, you know, I could be different. I can try to be different and pick another product. But I can't lie to myself. It is... A speaker that I've been hearing and obsessing over for the last month and a half or so. Just absolutely in love with this speaker. So why did I pick the Model 5 as the product of the year? Well, Model 5 is a really special speaker. Like, if you can get past the vintage looks that a lot of people commented, it's just not going to work for me. I understand. I, I fully understand. I'm in that same boat. I don't like the look of the Model 5's vintage vibe going on, right? I want it to be a bit more modern and nice looking. But honestly speaking, the sound itself is pretty modern. And if you can get past that vintage look, the speaker itself is just absolutely amazing. And if you go and check out my review, which I'll link in the description below, I really loved the speaker. Like for $2,000, which is not cheap by any means, right? $2,000 is a, a good chunk of cash, but it is achievable. It is savable. It's not like $10,000, $20,000 speakers out there that is just you know, a lot more out of my reach. For $2,000, the Kalish Model 5s plays to me, like, it, all honesty, they play on equal grounds with like my Sonos Fabric Electa Motor 3, which is $10,000, like I said in my review of the KLH Model 5s. Now that's not to knock on the Sonos Fabers. Sonos Fabers have a different sound, and if you want that sound, then the Electa Motor 3 is going to be the choice. And not to mention the looks of the Electa Motor 3. But again, like I said, if you can get past the KLH Model 5s, look that vintage look and if, even if, if you like that vintage look is a perfect speaker and the sound is just on even grounds with a lot of the speakers that i've heard including totems sonos fabers wilson audio but scratch all that just for a moment right let's say it doesn't perform technically as well as the wilson sonos fabers or you know even the totems even so one of the really real vital reason why I like the KLH Model 5 is because like all those speakers that I mentioned that I raved about and loved, it connects with me in an emotional way. It's a very musical sounding speaker. On top of that, despite being a musical speaker, it is one of these speakers I've ever heard that measures extremely well at the same time being musical. I usually hear speakers that measure very well and they're not that musical to my ears, but this was an entirely different case. The KLH Model 5s, in terms of specs, in terms of the frequency response, in terms of off-axis, all of those things measure extremely well, despite sounding very musical to my ears. So that's a plus for me as an assurance that there was proper engineering going on. It, you know, it pleases the measurement side of the people, it pleases the subjective side of the people, and to me, it's best of both worlds. And like I said, the tone is extremely good right between Totem and Sonos Fiber, so that warmish sound of a Sonos Fiber and the Totem's a little bit more snappy, more lighter tone uh, combined is somewhere in the middle. And you know what they say, middle is always the best because Sonos Faber or Totem, I was like, ah, oh, I love the Totem's lighter tone presentation, but at the same time, I like the Sonos Faber's warm, luscious sound presentation. And the Kalish just came at the right time and fit that right middle portion of the tone that I was looking for. So that's why I picked the Kalish Model 5 as product of the year because I think honestly a lot of people can achieve the Kalish Model 5 at $2,000 MSRP and most importantly because this is my channel and Kalish Model 5 is what made my emotion go whoa this is this is right kind of thing that's why I chose it but there are other options that were very enticing and actually contemplated a lot between the Bucard S400 Mark II and the KLH Model 5. Because if you remember my review of the Bucard S400 Mark II, in that video I said, technically speaking, like in terms of detail, high frequency extension, refinement, bass extension, and those things, technically speaking, the Bucard S400 Mark II 
is overall a better speaker than the KLH Model 5. It does a lot of things better than the KLH Model 5. However, I just could not pick the Bacardi S400 Mark II, not because I don't love it. I love the Bacardi S400 Mark II, but it, it's, it's a preference thing. The KLH Model 5 just has the tone and it's really the tone and I'm a big tone freak, right? As you know. So basically long story short, the reason I chose the Kalish Model 5 is because I prefer it and this channel is about my preference, my journey. But technically speaking, if you want a more technically better speaker in terms of refinement, in terms of you know, bass extension and stuff like that, then the Bacard S400 Mark II is a better speaker. So it's a runner up, but at the same time, it could have gone either way, right? If I pick the one that actually is supposed to perform better, right? Just, you know, without my subjective uh, bias towards the tone, then the Bacard S400 Mark II would have won, but I still prefer the tone on the Kalish Model 5, which is my number one priority when I'm looking for a speaker. So hope that makes kind of sense. And, we do have another runner up and that is the Sonos Fiber Electamotor 3 and I know, I know it's $10,000 and I'm not telling you to buy these, quite frankly I don't care if you buy any of these but the Sonos Fiber Electamotor 3 it deserves to be on the list because it's one of my favorite speakers it's one of the first speakers that I actually loved the tone so much to even consider buying a speaker for $10,000 straight out so yeah Sonos Fiber Electamotor 3 does definitely deserve to be on this list, especially with that Italian craftsmanship, leather, the looks. If you live in a nice place and you're making bank, then the Sonos Fiber Electamotor 3 is the way to go because it looks nice. It fits into a lot of the aesthetics, walnut finish, solid wood, the, the marble. It's just a nice speaker. It's a very luxurious speaker. And like I said, it's not just a nice looking speaker. It actually sounds darn good. And one of my favorite speakers of all Sonos Fiber speakers in the lineup. So it's a full package. Luxury, you know, if you want luxury and the sound quality, you know, always those two things. It's not always in line. Sometimes it's luxurious, but the sound quality is just meh. This, in my opinion, is a very good speaker that combines luxury with sound very very well. So again, deserves to be on the list in terms of value proposition, not so much, but at the same time, there's stuff that goes into it like I explained in the video below, why it costs the amount it does, so make sure to go check that out. Now fourth and the last runner up is the Totem Tribe Towers. Now you might be wondering why didn't I choose the Totem Metal version 2s? Well, the reason being is that the Totem Metal version 2 is a quite expensive speaker. It is good value depending on what you compare it to. If you compare it to the KLH Model 5s, then no, it's not a good value. But if you compare it to like Wilson Audio, Focal, which yes, the Metal version 2s in my opinion is in that playing ground, then yeah, it's very good value because you're talking about like speakers four times the price of the Metal version 2s. So it really depends on your perspective, what you want in a speaker. Like the Meta version 2 is a better looking speaker than the Model 5s in my opinion. It's a bigger speaker. It has those, you know, signature totem drivers that I love so much that has no crossover built into it. So it's just very pure sounding. So it, it really depends on what you want and where your perspective is in terms of value. But the reason I picked the Totem Tribe Towers is if you remember watching my Meta version 2 review, I said that the bass was more impressive than the Totem Tribe Towers. The high frequency was, you know, uh, a little bit more smoother. But at the end of the day, I still prefer the tone of the Totem Tribe Towers and the imaging and sound staging of the Totem Tribe Towers. So if I were to want that a little bit more bass thump, I would rather get the Totem Tribe Towers and get a pair of rail subs or, you know, musical subwoofers like Open Baffle or something like that and call it a day. So that's why I still like the Totem Tribe Towers because again, even though it's less expensive than the Metal version 2s, in my opinion and from my perspective, tone is the most important thing for me. Like I need to hear an instrument and be like, yep, oh my god, it's just ringing into my soul, right? It's, it's real, it's realistic. So that's what I want and when I talk about tone is that musical realisticness. So that's it from me. Those are the products I would choose for this year. Now if you're wondering why I didn't choose any of the gear and only speakers, it's because I was more impressed with the speaker side of things this year rather than the gear. 
but I will make a video on gear only. So I would say make sure to subscribe and click that bell notification so that you get notified and you don't miss that one. You don't want to miss that one. And I just want to say thank you everyone for 2021. It's been a tough year for everyone, but I hope 2022 is better. And I all wish you health and prosperity. Thank you, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.